Chapter 4 Introduction to Political Science This chapter tells you about what politics is and why studying politics is important. The study of politics is called political science. This is also the name of the subject that this section introduces. Introduction We are set to study political science. Never heard of this science? Don't worry. This subject is about the study of the activities called politics. You have surely heard about politics? Whenever someone is aspiring for power or position, we spontaneously say that the person is doing politics. Whenever someone is planning with others how to achieve some objective, one reaction is that they are doing politics. Often, we also imply that doing politics is not a very good thing. But can we live without politics? And is politics really a bad thing? I know. When I wanted to be class secretary, some girls in my class said that I was into politics. Do you know, my sister always makes secret plans with my mother. Father says they are doing politics. But I think politics is a big thing and happens out in the society and not inside homes. As we shall see below, politics is a necessary activity. Therefore, a systematic study of that activity is useful. What actually is politics about? Politics and Political Science do you think that, as members of society, we all should know about the way politics happens around us? This subject called political science will help you understand this. What is science? You have heard about science. Science means systematic study. So, physics is a systematic study of the physical materials. And geography is a systematic study of nature and environment, land mass and rivers, and so on. Every area or branch of systematic inquiry is described as a science. If we need to study matter and environment and trees and even human body, should we not need to study the society we live in? Study of matter and environment, living beings, etc., is called study of physical sciences and life sciences. Similarly, study of society is called social sciences. Political science is one such social science. It is about society, but it is about one particular dimension of social life, namely politics. What is so odd about it? In my group, every girl has a different opinion about every film. Yet we are friends and we keep telling each other why a particular film is good or bad. Human beings always live in society. No humans ever like to live alone. When many human beings live together, they do not live as a herd or as a crowd. They live together with a purpose to make their lives better. This purpose sets them apart from other animals that may live in herds. Human beings live in a society. Collective well-being is the purpose of any society. Once a society comes into being, questions emerge about what is in the interest of all members, as we saw in the example of the small town above. Questions also arise about who should decide what everyone's interest is. And questions arise about who should run affairs common to the group. In other words, politics begin. What is science? What is social science? Activity. Consider this question for a moment. Can there be a society without politics? Discuss this with your friends. Write down your arguments that come up in the discussion. A. What do we study in political science? Realizing that politics is a part of society, thinkers in ancient societies devoted time and energy to study politics and society systematically. Of course, 
our society today is so much different from ancient societies. But ideals and ideas about good society propounded by ancient thinkers have always remained attractive. Study of politics always focuses on this question about what ideals are more fruitful for the entire society. Another challenge before every society is to run its affairs smoothly. This requires a government and some basic rules about how to manage our collective affairs. Political science has given attention to this question of forming government and running it. Countries in the world engage in relations with each other. These relations lead sometime to wars, but often to trade and give and take. Studying political science includes the study of world politics too. Above all, power is central to all politics. So, the study of political science is related to the question about why people want power and what they do for getting power. In other words, power and competition are at the heart of the study of politics. Which are the subject matters of political science? B. Why study politics? You all must be wondering why we need to study political science. As we saw above, politics is about ideals. Politics is also about governments. It is about deciding who will use power. Political science tells us how to understand ideals. It helps us understand how governments are formed and what do they do. Political science also tells us why power is important and what people do with power. With the help of political science, we can examine and criticize the behavior of rulers, leaders and government officers. Study of politics will tell you how rules are made for managing social affairs. It will tell you how governments get their powers. We shall study how elections take place and why elections are important. Study of politics will also help you in becoming vigilant and active citizens. You may have differences with others over what is best for a society. Study of politics will teach you how to deal with such difference. Most importantly, every citizen has the right to keep a watch on how government functions. Study of politics will tell you how to evaluate a government and its policies and how to keep the government under control. Which are the things you study with the help of political science? Activity Read from newspapers of last one month news about agitations that took place either in Maharashtra or elsewhere in the country. Discuss in your class the issues over which those agitations happened. Let us look at some examples of politics. Do you know that every village has a Gram Panchayat? And every town has a Municipal Council? The Gram Panchayat and the Municipal Council looks after the maintenance of roads and lights in the locality. Government of India has decided to spend a lot of money on making provisions for schools because everyone must get education. The government wants to take over land from the farmers for some big project. The farmers are opposed to this move. They organize and start an agitation against the policy of the government. When elections are taking place for the Gram Panchayat or the Lok Sabha, Candidates and their parties contact the people asking for their votes. This is known as the election campaign. Activity Find out from each of these examples why they are called politics. Make a list of those who are most likely to be involved in doing things mentioned in these examples. List out the actors involved in these examples. Write down which of the following activities these examples of politics involve. First, deciding policies. Second, 
running routine government. Third, competing for power. Fourth, expressing differences over a decision of the government. Fifth, setting up a goal or ideal. Activity. Do you know the names of any political parties? Which of these parties actually exist in your village or city? What do these parties do? Politics as differences. Think of a small town. This town is divided into three groups and outsiders may easily say that there is a lot of groupism in the town. What is the groupism about? One group is wanting to spend some money collected from the residents for constructing a temple. But some others are saying that having a small library for the residents will be much more useful. Disagreeing with both these propositions, some residents are saying that it is much more important to first ensure supply of tap water to the poor locality before we think of a temple or a library. Only if the town had all the resources in the world, it could manage all the three things. But they have only limited resources. So they have to decide where to spend the money first. Do you think this groupism is bad? Do you think this groupism can be avoided? This example tells us why and how groups get formed. If we know the reasons behind formation of groups, we shall be able to understand how competition among groups is important. Politics as governing. And here is yet another example. Your school is going to start a small library of storybooks for students and says that day-to-day -day management of this library must be done by students themselves. It is decided that class 9 students should take up the responsibility. Then, a competition begins among the various divisions of class 9th. In each division, a few boys and girls want to become secretary of the library. Is there anything wrong in wanting to be a secretary of the student's library? If nobody wanted to be the secretary, who will manage the library? In this same manner, we would need people to come forward to manage the common affairs of the society. Whenever a formal association is formed, differences take place in the course of its functioning. Whenever people come together on a regular basis for some common purpose, differences are bound to occur. We might disagree about work plan. There would also be competition for positions to run the affairs of the group. This will lead to discussions. Then there will be some give and take. Differences, competition and give and take help in reaching a better decision and better management. There is nothing to be worried about differences. This is politics. Are they telling us that differences are not bad? Aristotle Aristotle was a philosopher who lived, worked and taught in ancient Greece about 24 centuries ago. Aristotle is famous for his claim that man is a political animal. According to him, forming a society for achieving collective goals is a distinguishing feature of human beings. Gautam Buddha 25 centuries ago, Buddha propounded equality as the organizing principle for society. He also pointed out that unfulfilled wants lead to Dukkha and good society must aim at overcoming Dukkha.